Cartographers. One of the single most aggravating things for many adventurers in all of RLCraft. A player needs an absurd amount of enchantments in order to feel as strong as possible in this intense Minecraft mod pack, and cartographers take away your chance of getting them simply by not being a librarian instead. I have eradicated thousands upon thousands of cartographers throughout all my Minecraft journeys, simply out of spite most of the time, but after doing some recent testing I confirmed to myself that cartographers are actually insanely useful. Cartographers in RLCraft in particular can sell you maps to 17 different locations, and these 17 locations happen to be locations that pretty much give you absolutely everything you could ever need in the overworld. I traded with 1,000 cartographers in order to get a better idea of what the rarity of acquiring specific maps is, and while that originally was the main focus of this video, while researching a single fact I wanted to include in but a single section of the video, I ended up going down a rabbit hole that took me three times longer to wrap my head around than the act of actually trading with 1,000 cartographers. So sit back and relax as I explain to you how I helped solve one of the biggest mysteries plaguing the RLCraft community, as well as the percentage chances of acquiring any given map after trading with 1,000 cartographers in RLCraft. First, I'll go over my findings after trading with 1,000 cartographers. After trading some paper with a cartographer, it unlocks the first pool of maps the villager can trade you, and for me there was only five. You can get a map to an extreme hills, a roofed forest, an ice plains, a savanna, or a desert biome. After trading with 1,000 cartographers, I ended up with 191 extreme hills maps, 214 roofed forest maps, 208 ice plains map, 185 savanna maps, and 202 desert maps. To me it is pretty clear that each of these 5 maps has about an equal chance of appearing in the trade at around 20% each. Next up, I found that the second and third pool of maps the cartographers sell both pull from the same map pool in different ways, so I decided to combine the second and third map pool into one. I traded compasses to the villager to unlock the second map pool, and then I traded another compass plus a few emeralds this time to purchase a map in order to unlock the third map pool. The second and third map pool will always yield three to four maps you can trade for, and after trading with 1,000 cartographers, this is how many of each map I got. I ended up with 155 Swamp Hut maps. Therefore, to be precise, each cartographer had a 15.5% chance of having a Swamp Hut map available to be traded for. To save time, I will now just list off the amount of maps I obtained of each type, and the correlating percent will follow the exact same trend as the 15.5% chance to 155 maps obtained from 1,000 cartographers. The villagers also had 457 Mega Taiga maps, 179 Desert Pyramid maps, 298 Flower Forest maps, 142 Jungle Temple maps, 513 jungle maps, 276 swampland maps, 191 mineshaft maps, 133 igloo maps, as well as 1000 ocean explorer and 1000 woodland explorer maps, which it seems all cartographers sell. Lastly, when trading some emeralds for a blank map, I unlocked the fourth map pool, which gave me one of two maps. After trading with 1,000 cartographers, I ended up with 524 mushroom island maps and 476 ice spike maps. It seems to me that it is around a 50-50 chance whether you get either one of these two maps. Before I continue, if you want to know how to read these maps, if you want to move left on your map, you will want your X value on your compass to become lower. And if you want to move down on your map, your Z value needs to become higher. I know the Z thing doesn't make much sense, but that is just how it works in a Railcraft. I hope this helps. Now, a pool of 1,000 villagers seems like a lot, but to be honest, it is still a pretty small test pool. If I traded with another 1,000 villagers, my results would be similar, but not be identical. So what I'm trying to say is that these are the results from my testing, not the actual facts. I think this gives a wonderful idea about what the facts are, but I could be off by up to 5% or so per map. One further disclaimer for my test results is that if there is no jungle biome within a certain amount of blocks from the cartographer trading the maps, the villager will trade you a map to a mesa biome instead. If there is a mesa and jungle nearby, then the percentage chance of a jungle or mesa map appearing in the third map pool is about equal. I only traded with villagers in a single spot and there was no mesa nearby, so I didn't get to calculate the exact mesa map chance though. My bad. Pretty much all the other maps, though, are within tracking distance of any given cartographer, or, from testing, within 10,000 blocks or so from one another. Now, while these percentages and neat facts are fun to know, let's move on to why this information matters for our Railcraft players. 
A map to an extreme hill's biome is particularly useful because trolls spawn underground in forest, cold, and mountain biomes. You will need to defeat a few trolls in order to make an avian saddle, so finding this biome merely by trading with a few cartographers is certainly useful. Next up, the roofed forest. Here you can get plenty of mushrooms for insect treats, and insect treats early on are very useful because taming an airipede in a desert biome grants you a swift land mount and powerful ally for dungeons. Making an insect saddle is pretty simple, so all you really need is insect treats. The fact that you also get desert maps from these villagers saves you the hassle of looking 40 days for a desert like I have in the past. Deserts grant easy access to clinks and aeropedes whose charges can be used to level up some of the most powerful equipment forge parts in the game as well. And you of course need an aeropede to tame once you make that insect saddle. Next up, the Ice Plains. Here you can find Ice Dragons for Ice Dragon Blood, as well as Wendingos for Wendingo Antlers and Bebecos for Bebeco Meat. Also, Teal and Purple Lycanite Dungeons can generate a mini cold biome, so you may spot one near the area. Lastly, for the first pool of maps, savannas aren't super useful in RLcraft, besides I guess you can find makas in them, but makas are not unique to this biome. Now on to map pools 2 and 3. Swamp Huts are pretty useful because these spawn in swamps seemingly in active generation nets, or whatever you want to call corner intersecting quadrants where things often generate. I am sure that some big brain person probably has a name for these, but I can't think of a good one myself. Anyways, this just means these oftentimes will be near teal lycanite dungeons, doom-like dungeons, mine shafts, and other structures that the game generates for you. So if you find this, you'll usually find something even in the same chunk, or at least I always seem to. Swampland Pathfinder maps, while they don't send you to a specific structure in a swamp, the fact that the map still sends you to a swamp can be useful for aspid meat and some other misc rustic ingredients if you're into elixirs. Moving right along, mega taigas are useful for pod souls so you can grow your own mushrooms. Also, Mega Tigers give an absurd amount of mushrooms. Desert Pyramid maps send the player to desert temples, and you can get runes and some other neat stuff here as well. Jungle Temple maps send you to jungle biomes, but it's the same thing with a Swamp Hut map. Usually there is a structure or a dungeon nearby. The Jungle Pathfinder maps, on the other hand, just send you to a random point near the edge of a jungle. Cocoa seeds, amphiphyres, and jungle marmex are some of the good things you can obtain from jungles. Village maps can be nice just so you can have more villagers to trade with. Mineshaft maps work sometimes, but other times the mineshaft will have something generate on top of it or just plain take its place. Usually a doom-like dungeon can do this, so this is probably the least reliable map in the second and third pool. The igloo map sends you to a small igloo in either an ice plains, ice tundra, glacier, ice mountain biome, you know, those super cold biomes. This can be useful again for Wendingos, Bebecos, and ice dragons. Lastly, the most important map in map pools 2 and 3 is the map to a flower forest. In this biome you can find pixies, and pixies have a good chance to drop pixie dust that can be made into potions of flight. These potions of flight trivialize the lost city's difficulty and a lot of other content in the game. Who needs a ring of the dragons that uses mana to fly when you can fly for free? These pixies spawn infinitely, so all you need to do is find one flower forest biome, and with around a 30% chance or so to find this map from any given cartographer, I can say that these villagers are useful for this fact alone. That being said, let's move on to the fourth map pool. The mushroom island biome is certainly neat, as you can get a lot of mushrooms and access to these beautiful little cows. But to be honest, this biome isn't too insanely useful, besides for achievements, in my opinion at least. The ice spikes map, on the other hand, grants you a map to ice spikes. These ice spikes can spawn in a few biomes, and these ice spike biomes always generate near other cold biomes. This can be particularly useful for a player who is looking for a Shavaxi Monument, as the Shavaxi Monument only spawns once every 100,000 cold biome blocks, and having multiple cold biomes next to each other can just help you cover more ground on your search. This is still a lot of ground to cover, even when you focus in on cold biomes with ice spike maps, igloo maps, ice plane maps, and the like. But, you know, it's something. Now, here is where I wanted to include a fact about the frozen ocean biome. You see, the frozen ocean biome is legendary in RLcraft because it is the only biome that the ice city structure naturally generates in. The ice city structure is an absurd location where you can fight the mod packs creator Shavaxi, as well as trade with a handful of villagers that trade you things otherwise unobtainable. Phantom prisms, which lets you make your armor invisible, the Holy Hand Grenade, which is a throwable explosive much stronger than End Crystals, Ender Dragon Eggs, and much more. Frozen ocean biomes generate extremely rarely in between cold biomes and oceans. So having a map to an ice spikes biome, which is surrounded by cold biomes, would be a nice map for searching for frozen ocean biomes on paper. A viewer of mine told me that it works, and I don't see any reason for a viewer to ever lie to a streamer, so I included it in the video. Still though, I needed to field test it myself for some footage. 
I began following more and more ice spike maps to different locations, all in search of footage of me stumbling upon a frozen ocean biome naturally. 10 maps, gone. 20. 30. 50. Nothing. Alright, so I thought it was super rare. Kiwi Gamer and many RLCraft content creators have looked for the biome before and have never found it, labeling it as the rarest in the game. I was foolish for thinking this was going to be easy. I decided that I was going to employ a search strategy and YouTube to help make my search a bit more laid back. I learned that in Minecraft, oftentimes when you find a cold beach, it is smart to keep following the beaches around the landmass as continents with cold beaches tend to have many cold beaches with only a few regular beaches sprinkled in between. I multitasked watching random entertaining YouTube videos on my second monitor for two entire IRL days as I went through cold biome after cold biome looking for a frozen ocean. But, after a total search effort spanning over 1.8 million blocks, I decided to stop looking in-game and started looking into the game files and mods. I found no indication of any mod existing that creates a modded frozen ocean biome in RLCraft. Traverse is one biome mod added into the mod pack, but it didn't add a frozen ocean biome, and no specific mods added anything like it either. So then I peered into the regular Minecraft files and found nothing that could help me for RLCraft's case. All evidence of discussion on the frozen ocean biome and the ice city structure online was all all hearsay, besides a single source that mentioned one of my own past YouTube videos where I simply stated how the structure is supposed to spawn. Only the vanilla frozen ocean biome had any information online, and that biome was made unable to generate naturally in 1.7.2 Minecraft, and then made able to generate again naturally in 1.13 Minecraft. RL Craft plays on version 1.12.2. So. I came to my conclusion that if the frozen ocean isn't added by a mod in RLCraft, then it will not generate naturally, despite it never being removed from the game files. Players who have tried to spawn in that biome with commands in RLCraft all had their games crash with no warning and not a single block generated. This only helped cement my theory. It truly was as if the frozen ocean biome just didn't exist in the first place. I took my argument to Shavaxi, the mod author of RLCraft himself, and we had a really cool discussion about this before he said that he would look into it. Which he is an absolute chad for actually doing, by the way. He took it to his Discord and asked for RLCraft beta testers to try to find an ice city and or frozen ocean naturally, and he himself went through everything in his power to locate the biome with commands, tools, and the like. Nobody was able to find anything, including Shavaxi himself, who was just as surprised as I was. The frozen ocean biome's file can be found in the deep chasms of the RLCraft files, and Shavaxi personally edited the ice city structure himself, and the structure is perfect. It makes sense that nobody has ever thought to argue that the frozen ocean biome didn't exist. It took someone as stubborn as myself to solve this mystery and finally put it to rest. The frozen ocean biome does not generate an RLCraft due to a small miscalculation. Shavaxi said that he would make the ice city structure findable in RLCraft 2.9.2 if he can, whether it be only found in a place like frozen river biomes or maybe a true modded frozen ocean biome. Only time will tell, but it is nice to know that my dozens of hours of obsessive searching didn't wind up being a complete waste of time. At the very least, now you, the viewer, will know not to look for a frozen ocean biome. It truly does not generate naturally in the mod pack RLCraft. With that though, I am going to wrap up. I hope from this video that it is very clear that cartographers are incredibly useful in RLCraft for all stages of the game, just not for finding a frozen ocean biome or ice city structure. Once you do find a flower forest biome and have a saddled flying mount, then you really don't need these villagers too too much either, but I don't think I will slay them anymore for merely not being a librarian. Cartographers have earned my respect, and now that I know of such an easy way to get potions of flight, I feel a bit safer in the dangerous world of RLCraft. Potions of wings are absurdly amazing. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a wonderful day, gamers. Buh bye bye